Someone is coming. Through the night. Against all the odds. They said it was impossible. He should have come by now. But he arrived precisely when he meant to. The Christmas story started long ago. Before we landed on the moon. Before we ever went to war. Before that special birth in Bethlehem. Before every famine and every flood. Before any person had ever died. A lonely couple who made a choice. Their home was the best place imaginable. But they listened to a serpent who told a lie instead of the God who cared for them. So their first baby and every child since has been born away from home. There was a hint a child from them would make things right. But their first son killed his younger brother. Death entered our broken world and the serpent's lie lived on. But God wasn't done. He sent someone. A great, great, great grandson. A boy who knocked down a giant without a fight. A man who honoured God. A king who cared. But he listened to the lie as well. He killed to steal himself a wife. Some people say that God isn't real, or he doesn't care, or he has lost control. There was another king who thought that way. He and his people were surrounded. Survival seemed impossible. God gave that king one chance, to ask for any sign he wanted, to show that he cared, that he was committed to rescue. The king declined. So God himself chose a sign. The virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel, God with us. Impossible. We didn't win the fight that day. We never beat the lie. But someone is coming, through the ages, through the night. Though they say it's impossible, when it seemed like all was lost, Jesus came precisely when he meant to. The Virgin had her child, Emmanuel, the sign that God himself has come to rescue.
God with us, Emmanuel. What a wonderful song, what a lovely little video to start this service, to remember that God keeps his promises and that 2,000 years ago, God came down into this earth, Emmanuel, God with us, Jesus, God made flesh. It is a wonderful thing to remember and celebrate today. And today, I guess you've just figured out, it's a year since our friends from America, from Hillcrest, came over to help us last Christmas. And a year ago, it was amazing to see our friends walk around the town and sing and do carol concerts and go into schools for us. And this morning, we've got a real treat. We've got some more songs that they have recorded especially for us. And in a couple of moments, we've got an interview with Don and with Jack to see how they are doing. So it's a special service this morning, remembering not just that first Christmas, but last Christmas as well. So before we do that, let's pray together. Oh, our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together this morning to come together to stop, to still our hearts and to remember Emmanuel, that you are a God who has come into our world and more than that, you want to come into our hearts. And so, Father God, we pray this morning, would you be glorified as we hear new songs and old songs, as we lift up our voices in our homes to praise you. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Dream. 
It's wonderful uh, to be uh, with our friends from Hillcrest Baptist Church. Um, it's been a long time, it seems, since we've seen Don and Jack. Um, guys, thank you so much for joining us. Um, and thank you so much for recording all this Christmas music for us. Uh, we have been feasting on it, and we've got more to enjoy in this service, which is wonderful. It really is making us homesick for a year ago with you. Um, but tell us, how was, how's 2020 been with you? How have things been in, in Hillcrest? We are, uh, like y'all, very uh, fluid is the word, I guess. Day-to-day -day is different. Of course, going into the pandemic, uh, we lost Will, our son, uh, and then the pandemic hit and we canceled services for a while. So it's been, for the Chandlers, uh, it's been quite different for sure. But we've, we've learned a lot. We, we have learned a lot about ourselves, a lot about what's essential in a church, what's not essential. Uh, pandemic has taught us things I think God wanted us to know. Uh, so we're thankful for the pandemic in that way. Mm. And, and as a church, you know, um, Don, we were really praying for you and the family and, um, you know, Facebook meant that we were kind of able to, to kind of walk that with you even from Wales. Um, and so you and the family have been deep in our, in our prayers. And, and Jack, what have you been doing this year? Has has kind of the pandemic affected you in your day to day life? Well, uh, here with student ministry, uh, it's just been really trying to figure out how to how to do student ministry, how to how to engage with students, how to still be involved with their lives and teach them and uh, watch them grow and help them grow. And so um, that aspect's been you know interesting to see. Um, I've been in the process. I'm getting ready to get married a year from today, actually. And so um, that's been fun trying to plan that. And thank you. Thank you. So just a lot of different things going on. So I've been busy, but uh, it's day to day has been, you know, just playing it by ear. <laughs> now, last year you came over the kind of five days before Christmas and people were just dumbfounded by the fact that you know you'd all come over um just before christmas and perhaps some people are new to the church or are watching this who weren't in the church last year could you just share why leave you know your kind of lovely warm <laughs> homes just before christmas to give up your precious holiday time uh, to come over to a wet and dark wheels uh when you think about christmas um and what christmas is it's Jesus. We celebrate Jesus coming down to earth. He left his throne and glory to come down to earth to be with us. And so it would only make sense for us to want to go as Christians, to go and be able to share the love, spread the good news of Jesus has come. Um, and so last year when we came, it wasn't necessarily a sacrifice for it. We, we enjoyed coming. Yes, we, we missed time with our family, um, but we, we wanted to come. We wanted to you know, have this opportunity to share the gospel in a place uh, where we haven't been before. And so that was, it was such a blessing for us to be able to do that. A few weeks ago, our pastor uh, talked about <clears throat> missions and he talked about the need for it, but how we as a people need to be compelled to go. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of where we were. We were compelled to go uh, because of the gospel. Uh, and then the, in the season of Christmas, what better time to, to go than Christmas, and we, uh, we we loved it. We loved our time, and we will love our time again if, if we get to go. And you know, it was it was such a blessing. You know, people crying uh, in the Angel Hotel, just you know, the school hall packed. But as well, um, this week we were looking at photos from last year and some video, and just remembering how you know you went into the home of one of our homebound members, Bill. And you sang to him at Christmas, and you know, I, it just—it was just bringing tears to my eyes. Um, to, just to think, I can't believe that was just five days. Um, the impact that it, it had on on the church, and not just last Christmas. When you came uh, last year, just a, a quick question from your point of view: What was the highlight, uh, apart from meeting me? What was the highlight uh, for you? Well, it all, it all pales in comparison to meeting Jonathan <laughs> Thomas uh, and, and how that affected my, our lives, for sure. Uh, I, think, I think as we went through the community caroling, 
uh, once we got our feet uh, used to doing that and going to the different places, and of course it topped off at the hotel, like you mentioned uh, earlier, uh, it, that, that was a highlight. Along with watching Cornerstone Church, when all those people started flooding into the, to the church uh, that Sunday night, and the y'all's expression uh, when the people started pouring in, uh, the enthusiasm and the encouragement that you felt uh, and sent from that meeting that night, that, that touched me because I saw the expressions on y'all's faces and it was uh, sheer joy that the people were coming in. And I, I thought God was good and those people chose to come. And again, y'all were encouraged by that. So I was touched by that. Jack? For me, I would say, you know, it, but one of the highlights for me was being in the homes of your church, getting to come and just get to know your people. And it, it was such a cool thing because you had never met most of us, but yet you welcomed us in as as your own. And that was just such a highlight for me, um, just going across um, the ocean and going to a country that I've never been before and getting to stay with somebody and build a relationship with them. Uh, and that, that was just that was pretty incredible to me. Tell us, how can we as a church here in Wales, how can we pray for you uh, in Hillcrest? How can we pray for you this Christmas and in 2021? We don't want to miss what God is trying to teach us through this pandemic. We, we don't want to miss whatever it is. We know some of the things I believe he's teaching us. I think he's teaching us to be simple in what we try to do. The gospel has got to be the forefront yeah. and we can't let other things crowd that out. Whatever it seems to be urgent in our life uh, needs to be important. So if it's something not, if something is urgent and it's not important, uh, it, we can let it go hmm. uh, and have those relationships where you can share the gospel, whether it be in your home, uh, watching live stream of your church or hopefully gathering on a consistent basis in 2021, which I pray we get to do. <laughs> uh, I really do. Jack? Just, yeah, continue to pray for us and everything he said. And uh, the just the, we would follow God's leading into next year because um, we still don't know what 2021 is going to hold. Uh, we're anticipating, you know, getting back to good, just kind of a, somewhat of a schedule. And we, we look forward to that. But um, again, we're, we want to be, um, we want to listen to for where, God is leading us and we want to um, not just revert to our old ways and just get where we want to do something. So we push forward in that, but we want to follow the Holy Spirit's leading. Uh, so just pray that we are sensitive to that. And look, one last question. If I don't ask this, I will be fired. Um, will you come back to Wales? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. And uh, we all, of course, with this pandemic has taught us uh, what God allows we do yeah. and if god allows it we will be back and if it's during christmas which i think that's kind of the we when we recorded the music uh the people that went to wells were saying how we miss you mm -hmm. and how we wish we were back uh, singing again in wells so uh the folks at cornerstone are special to the folks at hillcrest mm -hmm. and know that if god allows it we will be back well before we hear one final song from our friends in hillcrest let's pray Oh, Father, we thank you for our friends. We thank you for partnership in the gospel, unity in Christ. Father, we thank you that in your providence you have brought us into a friendship with our brothers and sisters in Hillcrest. We thank you for the way they serve us and love us. We thank you that because we are one in Christ, we are friends, we are brothers, we are united. And we want to pray for our friends in America now. We want to pray, Father, that over these coming weeks and months, you would help them to know how to lead the church, how the church goes forward in this time, how to simplify and to focus on what matters, the gospel. Father, would you bless them and keep them, flourish them, we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, let's listen to Glorious Impossible. <laughs>
glory lies beside her in the straw. He is mercy's incarnation, marvel at this miracle. For the virgin gently holds the glory as impossible. has come to walk on water, turn the water into wine, touch the leper, bless the children, love of human and divine. Praise the wisdom of the Father, who is spoken through His Son, speaking still He calls us to the glory. Well, again, a warm welcome to our service this morning. If we haven't met before, my name is Jonathan Thomas. I'm the pastor of Cornerstone Church. I just want to tell you things that are happening in the life of the church over the coming weeks. Um, on Christmas Day, December the 25th, we do have a service together. It's at 9.30 in the morning and it's on Zoom. So on Zoom at 9.30 on Christmas morning, we can come together. We've got some of the children uh, reading poems, singing songs, sharing what they've had. We've got a, a little uh, message based on my favourite Christmas. Christmas ad of 2020 and so you'll get an email with all the details of how to get onto the Zoom call 9.30 Christmas morning. Next Sunday December the 27th we have a 10.30 service in the morning and that is the final Sunday for Babs who has been our children's worker now for around seven years and so it'll be an opportunity to celebrate all that God has done 
through Babs over the last uh, seven years or so, and as well to commission her as she goes to uh, the Baptist Church. And so that's at 1030 then from next uh, Sunday the 27th there are no physical services at 3 p.m. Uh, we feel under the current situation and with uh, the numbers that were coming that actually it wasn't the wisest thing to go ahead and so uh, from the 27th of December to the end of January at least there will be no physical services at 3 p.m. however we will be having services at 6 o'clock on YouTube from the 27th. Now a big thank you to you as a church. We asked you a few weeks ago to raise money and to give uh, to local compassion projects, to two um, projects that we're passionate about, the Food Bank, which the Baptist Church are um, looking after, and the Gateway Compassion Christmas Project. You gave far more than I anticipated. Well over £3,000 has been raised. I want to thank you so much from the bottom of my heart from the way that you have raised that money. And so that money then has been split between the Food Bank and Gateway. Um, and it was wonderful this week to go and visit those two projects um, and just to give a cheque from you, the church family, and a card on behalf of the church family, just explaining how much we love them, we are thankful for them, and how much we want to support them and they were overwhelmed by your generosity and so encouraged so church thank you thank you thank you for giving way over three thousand pound to support the local food bank and gateway compassion project please pray for it as it goes on and our little compassion project call cornerstone abergavenny listening line is starting very soon um, please pray for the team as they train and prepare really to help people who might be feeling lonely or isolated or just wanting a chat and someone to talk to so please pray for that spread the word if you know someone who maybe is lonely why not tell them hey phone the church have a chat maybe have a prayer with someone that would be wonderful now this morning we want to focus our prayers on the NHS, on uh, professional healthcare workers. In our church we have a number of people who work uh, behind the scenes, in administration, um, in outpatients, in hospitals, in GP surgeries, um, who are training to be um, paramedics, um, first aid responders and, and so forth. There's a, a large team and so um, I've asked one of the patriarchs of our uh, church, uh, David Shaw, a retired uh, GP and far more, um, to pray for us. So over to David to lead us in prayer. Before we go to prayer, can I ask how are your prayers these days? Are they rushed like mine was this morning? sometimes left till the evening and then you're too tired and you want to go to sleep or the phone goes or somebody rings the bell so that the Lord gets the scrag end of our prayers and other times perhaps our prayers don't seem to be reaching their goal and it's almost as though your prayers are ricocheting around the walls of your of your soul. If you feel some of it or all of these things then you're in good company today. And now to pray to our almighty and loving God, our almighty and everlasting God and to whom all hearts are open all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inbreeding of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. The chief end of man, we read, is to glorify God and to enjoy him together, to enjoy him together and forever. So I pray now that we may be able to do that. Lord, we praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you. We give thanks to you for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. And praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the cruel pains and insults that you have borne for us, and for all the many blessings that you won for us. O Holy Jesus, most merciful Redeemer and friend and brother, May we know you more clearly 
and love you more dearly and follow you more nearly. It's in your name that we, we pray. And now to our confessions for sins past, remembering that we need to go to the cross, that's the only way for the forgiveness of sins. We carry our filthy rags and put them at the cross. We look up and see it's blood-stained, but it's gloriously empty. And we praise you and bless you for that, Lord. And when we come to you, may we not only have feelings of guilt and dissatisfaction and conviction, but uh, truly have penitence so that we may turn away from our sins and gloriously we can know that they are forgiven if we do go to the cross because that's the only place to go to and we thank you lord that you forgive sins because you became the curse for us that we might have eternal life and thanksgiving well we could go on for a thousand years and we thank you for those who care for us in different ways and for others. Those who are out on the streets, tending to people on the streets, those with addictions, those who fall on hard times, and those living and sleeping in shop doorways. So we thank you for those who, who care for them with a kind word when they're passing, perhaps, or a touch. Thank you for the Salvation Army and for Crisis and other like organisations. And then we turn to those who are cared for in the caring homes up and down the country. And the lonely folk who may be isolated in the top story of a high-rise flat and so lonely and detached from the community. We thank you for those who have not forgotten them and turning to hospital care. I think you'd also keep the hospital clean for those who prepare and serve the food, for the laboratory workers, for the pharmacists, and of course for those at very close hand and in great danger, our nurses and doctors, and physiotherapists and others. We'd like to take this opportunity of bringing before you those in our family in Cornerstone. I'll read them out and trust that you will join me in asking God to protect them and to guide them and lead them and bless them. Becky Beckinsale, Sam Beckinsale, Tom Close, David Dickinson, Becky Ferrand, Rachel King, Mike Jones and Becky Jones, Rachel Kindred, Jill Kirkman, J. D. Kitson, Andrew Lewis, John Northfield and Alison Squires. We remember two of those who transport patients to and from hospital for the patients themselves, perhaps from accident or serious, serious illness. The ambulance drivers and paramedics and the anxious families. So Lord, we leave these prayers with you and ask if you will mercifully hear them and accept them and that we may ourselves be blessed by your Holy Spirit this day and in the future. Because we ask it in the Saviour's name. Amen.
Magnifying glasses are used by lots of different people for different reasons. They're used by young people to maybe look at bugs and different ants and different things in the ground. They're used by professional perhaps to look closely at a diamond or a gem. Or maybe the older you are, you actually have a magnifying glass to read the local newspaper to double check that all the details and pictures are right. Magnifying glasses make things bigger so that you can see them better. And actually, our hearts are magnifying glasses. Our hearts help us to enlarge things, to see things better, to make things bigger than they are. But our hearts as magnifying glasses actually can be good or bad. And this morning, very quickly, I want to share with you two destructive ways to magnify and two delightful ways to magnify. Let me show you firstly the first destructive way. The first destructive magnification is fears, is when your heart enlarges, makes bigger, focuses on fears. I wonder what fears you have magnified this year. The pandemic, problems, pain, personal struggles, people who are against you. And often when we magnify those fears, the problems increase and we, as many people say, make a mountain over a molehill. And it's interesting how often those magnifications come at night. How many of you woken up in the middle of the night and your heart has magnified something? And if we magnify our fears, we are in trouble. Mind you, we not only magnify our fears, we can actually also magnify good things. And we can magnify good things to make them great things. And actually, that is a problem too. You see, the second destructive magnification is dreams. Dreams. You see, often we can forget what's happening in the world and get caught up in a daydream. And we can think of things that we believe that if they came true or if they happened, everything would be okay. And again, I think that's happened a lot this year. Things that we have thought about and dreamt about that we think if only that would happen. I wonder if you've put your hopes into certain dreams this year, like lockdown easing or loved ones visiting or losing weight and getting fit or laboratories creating vaccines or leaders in government. Often we magnify these dreams and we make good things great things, or more than that, we make great things God things. And the problem is when you magnify these people and these processes, actually you put on them a weight of responsibility that they cannot fulfill. When you raise someone on a pedestal, as I've said a number of times before, they always fall off. And that's because we've put them there and we pull them off. We need to be careful that we don't put our hope 
in the wrong things, that we don't make good things God things. So those are the two destructive magnifications I think we can do. The magnifying glass in our life of the heart can increase fear and self-pity, but it can also enlarge others beyond their ability, which can end up disappointing and crushing them. And the net result of those two destructive magnifications is that God shrinks in our view. God shrinks in our view because he can't do anything because the problem seems so big or we don't need him because those good things seem such like a God thing. When you magnify the wrong things, you minimise God. Well, in today's reading, we're going to see a different type of magnification. Two magnifications that are delightful. And it's in the magnification, the magnificat or magnificat. That comes from the first a line in the uh, Song of Mary written in the Latin. And it really is the first Christmas song ever to be sung. Let me read for you Luke chapter 1 verses 46 to 55. Here are the words of Mary. Luke chapter 1, verses 46 to 55. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Saviour, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. He extends mercy to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He scattered those who are proud in the inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Did you see what Mary magnifies? Now Mary is amazed by what's happening to her. She is blown away by God's mercy and goodness. She cannot believe that she has been chosen to become pregnant and to give birth to the Saviour of the world. And so she's amazed by the way that God is mindful of her, even in her lower state. But actually what she's more amazed by when you read through the Magnificat is that God has kept his promise. As it goes on, you start to realise she's not just thinking about herself, but what the baby within her signifies. That's what she wants to magnify. The fact that God, what does it say at the end, has kept his promise. She goes through the Old Testament and she says, God has, God has, God has, God has promised and now. God is delivering. Now tonight we're going to look at the fact that God was mindful of Mary and how she responded. We're going to look at that tonight. But this morning I want to look at how Mary understood the fact that God had been faithful. You see, let's look at the first delightful magnification. There are two ways you can magnify in a delightful way. Here's the first delightful magnification. God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness. If you want to be delighted, if you want to know God, then focus, magnify, look at God's faithfulness. Not to magnify it because it needs to be bigger, but because God's faithfulness can only be seen backwards through time. And so actually, you need to look at what has happened. That's the magnification that we're looking at. Did you see it in the reading, verse 48? She says that God has been mindful of the lowly. That's always the way God does it. When you read through the Old Testament, book of Exodus, for example, the Israelites are enslaved and they cry out to God and he hears them in their lowly position. Verse 51, he has performed mighty deeds. All the times in the Old Testament where he parted the Red Sea or where he beat armies, where he handed things over. But verse 54 is clear. The key is... He has remembered, he is remembering, remembering what, verse 55, he has promised. And throughout all that, there's this little phrase, he has, he has, he has. Look down, do you see it there? All the time, verse 48, he has. Goes on, verse 51, he has. Halfway through verse 51, he has. Verse 52, he has. Verse 53, he has. Verse 54, he has, he has. Here's what I want you to see. God has. He has. 
When you look at God's past, when you look at his track record, when you look at what he's like, he has, he has, he has, he has. He has been mindful. He has been mighty. He has rescued. He has remembered. He has kept his promise. And right here in this moment of time, all Israel thought God had failed. Where is God? Where is Israel? Where is our kingdom? For 400 years, there's been complete silence. No one has heard a word from God. And the next thing, angels are popping up. Mary is pregnant. God is coming. God incarnate in the flesh, in her womb. And she says, bam, he has. He has remembered. He is mindful. He has kept his promise. Brothers and sisters, this year, you may have found 400 years of silence. You may have struggled to hear God's goodness. What do you do? Do you magnify your fears? No. Do you magnify dreams in others? No. Magnify God's faithfulness. Turn your gaze, look back. He has, he has, he has, he has. That's why we started with that little video. That little video shows that from all the way back in the Garden of Eden to the Exodus, God has been promising a serpent crusher. God has been promising the one who will come to save from King David all the way through, God has promised. Even in the first 400 years, the last 400 years before Mary, God had promised before that and they needed to trust. All our songs from America have reminded us that God came, Emmanuel. And as we saw those songs and saw that interview, don't you remember God's faithfulness to us as a church last year? Last year, how God provided for us, doors opened, people heard the gospel. When we hear from our friends in America and from Don, even in losing his son, he can testify to God's faithfulness. When we look back, we see that God has kept us. And even in David Shaw's prayer, God's faithfulness in all that he has given us. This is what I want us to learn to say. He has, he has, he has. And then ask yourself your question, what has he done? He has been faithful. He has remembered. He will keep his promise, which means he will be faithful. He will remember. He will keep his promise. As you come to the end of 2020, remember that God is mindful of you. He remembers you and he keeps his promises. Magnify that, which means there is one other way to magnify. The second delightful magnification, what is it? magnify to others that's what mary does she sings out she magnifies to others and two thousand years later we are rejoicing in god because of her and calling her blessed what should we do magnify god and his faithfulness and magnify him in what we say and what we speak brothers sisters let's invite our friends to hear the gospel this Christmas. Send them an email or a Facebook message. Drop a CD through the door. Send them to one of our online programs or services. Give them a gospel of Luke. Do anything and everything you can to magnify God, to show them Jesus, because God is with us, Emmanuel. Christ is born, Christ 
Dear Father, we thank you for our time together this morning. We thank you for the memories of last Christmas with our dear friends. We thank you for the focus on your faithfulness, that you are always mindful of us, you always remember your promises, and you never fail. Father, would you help us to invite others now to come to you, to know your faithfulness, to be found in you, and you alone, we pray. Give us boldness and confidence to share your word, we pray, in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.